Hello and welcome back to the sideboard. My name is Ruben Bressler and I'm here with Caleb Durward, who is already a champion today of the Standard Open. Right. Uh, looking to go back to back, which would be nice. That'd be great. Uh, and you here at the Legacy Open are battling with Elves. Tell us a little bit about Elves. Elves is a very consistent deck. It has a consistent turn three kill. It's very powerful. It casts a glimpse of nature and uses that as a sort of like, well, it's better than an Ancestral Recall. You basically draw your entire deck and then you attack your opponents with many large creatures. Mirror Entity makes them all whatever size you want them, and then you kill them. There's a few different infinite combos in the deck, but generally you don't even need them. Your opponent will just scoop once they realize that you have uh, an insurmountable board position. Now, it's, it's mostly green mana, but of course the white mana is for Mirror Entity. Talk about a little bit why Mirror Entity is the best kill for elves. Mirror Entity is fantastic. Uh, sometimes you just have a Gaia's Cradle, and your creatures aren't, don't have a, a draw engine in them, and you just draw a mirror entity and you're like, oh, they're all 10 tens, kill you. Like out of nowhere, it's the best top deck in the deck. It's just incredibly powerful. It also creates a few different infinite loops in the deck. Like if you have mirror entity, priest of Titania, wirewood symbiote, for example, assuming the priest of Titania doesn't have a summoning, sick summoning sickness, one mana will make the mirror entity and the wirewood symbiote both elves. So the priest can tap for three. You bounce the wirewood symbiote with its own ability to untap the priest, replay the symbiote, um, use a mana from Mirror Entity, and you have one more mana than from where you started. Uh, there's a few different combos, that's the simplest one. So, so. yeah, uh, I, I've, I've been talking with some friends of mine about elves, and it's surprising how people don't really know how to combat elves. Have you been running into, into uh, that fact that people don't know what part of the combo they want to fight, or taking out the wrong creature, or things like that? I have run that in the past. Like, uh, I play a turn one Heritage Druid, and I have my opponent Force of Will themselves, like one green him to Turaki, pretty much just like the best spell ever. Sure. But, uh, but in this tournament, most of my opponents have been pretty comp competent. Um, I had a Goblin's opponent double Pyrokinesis me, uh, which I then won through with the Scavenging Ooze. Um, my ad nauseum opponent knew when he had to combo off to try and kill me, uh, and then and then that forced him to fizzle, which let me win that match. Um, my last round opponent, uh, Joe Bernal, uh, was boarding parishes as well as having uh, zealous persecutions and pile of plow effects. Sure. So most of my opponents have been prepared for elves. I'm just running very well. Right. A lot of but up until very recently, elves had sort of fallen off the radar. It sort of. Uh, wasn't that big, and then Christopher Anderson took it to a couple right. of good finishes. Right, yes, that's his it, fault. Blame him, it is not me. Blame Christopher Anderson <laughs> for the popularity of the Little Green Men. Now, another thing that adds to the um, uh, consistency of your deck is crop rotation, which I see you're main decking two of, which is a, a change that I honestly hadn't seen uh, until maybe last week. Talk a little bit about crop rotation. Sure. Crop rotation helps you combo faster. You can more consistently get to Gaia's Cradle. Um, it also gives you more combat tricks with Pendlehaven, that sort of thing. It you usually don't, uh, it's not as dead of a draw as an extra land in the mid game because you can get a Horizon Canopy and draw and keep going. Um, the reason I went up to two for this tournament instead of just one is because I included a tutor package in the sideboard, including Caracas, Pajuka Bog, and Maze of Ith, uh, to bring in against. Uh, wherever they're applicable. Yeah, you have a very interesting sideboard. You, are, you mentioned your, your land package. You've also got uh, several artifacts in your sideboard. Talk a little bit about your, your artifact package. Uh, Thorn of Amethyst and Thalia go together. Um, I've seen three thorns before. I think the two-in-one split is just better, simply because you can turn the Thalia into a elf with Mirror Entity when you're going off and tap it with uh, either Heritage Druid or Birch Lore Rangers. Um, so I, and it attacks for two, so I think it's better than the third Thorn of Amethyst, but the second Thorn of Amethyst is better than the third Thalia because they're legendary and you want multiples, preferably. Um, the Umazawa's Jit comes in a variety in a variety of matchups. It's good in the Mirror match, it's good against Maverick, it's good against other decks with Jit in them because it's it basically mem uh, meddling mages the opponent's Jit, because Jit can be good against elves, and then it also uh, gives you a, uh, a proactive win off of it. Meek Stone is interesting, it's mostly for Rug. The way Rug beats this deck if they do is uh, playing an early Delver and then just riding it to victory. Meek Stone will just stop that. Um, I only have one because usually you can fire off a Glimpse of Nature and then draw into either the Wind or a Meek Stone if you fizzle out. It's not necessary to have a ton of them. And I also bring in one Humility 
in that in that matchup. It does a similar thing as Meekstone. It costs more, but it's just there for redundancy. Yeah, and then he, he Mortar Pod works. is an answer to Grim Lava Mitsu. It's also good against the Elves Mirror. Um, it's good against a lot of decks. I bring it in against it's Dredge. Random Peacekeepers like, and sure, things Sure, Peacekeepers. Like that. I've, I've never seen that. But, sure, well, but yes, just thinking of things that you would want to get rid of. Right. So you've got these two Humilities. Is that is that a nod to the Gristlebrand decks? It is a nod to the Gristlebrand decks. Uh, they cast Show and Tell. You put in a Humility. They put in Emrakul or a Grizzlebrand, and then you kill them with five one ones or something, and they have one one. Nice. One one one, and they are very sad. Now you're you're currently five zero in the tournament. Currently five zero. Is, is there anything about the deck that you would change, having seen what the field looks like, or is this the nope. seventy five that you would it's, run? Yeah, it's you, it's tuned for this meta. Uh, I think appropriately so. So. Yeah. So if you're looking for a deck that you think is going to be powerful in your local legacy meta game, uh, you should definitely try Elves out. Take it from Caleb Durward. Uh, it's good against Rug, Maverick, Blue White Concoctions, uh, other creature decks. It is bad against Reanimator, and that's about it. Excellent, and with Reanimator sort of falling off the radar, this is definitely a good pick. Correct. So that's it for the sideboard. My name is Ruben Bressler.